Hello everyone. In today's video, I will highlight our recent work, Cartanza Baujiba approach to efficient measurements. And it addresses the uh, measurement problem in variational quantum eigensolver for quantum chemistry, uh, where we need to deal with electronic Hamiltonian measurements. And for those who are familiar with the topic, uh, they know that uh, when it comes to electronic Hamiltonians, we cannot measure the entire Hamiltonian at once. We need to partition it to pieces that we can measure. And the highlight of this work really is uh, that we found a scheme that gave us a record low number of uh, fragments that are measurable. Now, before I tell you how we did this, uh, let me first uh, introduce what the measurement problem uh, origin is. And when it comes to variational quantum eigensolver, we create a wave function that uh, is uh, created by circuit. And when, it, uh, when we want to obtain the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, we measure the prepared wave function. And it turns out that on the quantum computers that we have now, the only operator that we can measure is a Z operator for each qubit. So essentially polarization along the Z axis. Now electronic Hamiltonians, as we know it, they, they don't uh, only contain Z operators, they contain all sorts of uh, Pauli products uh, with X, Y, and Z. So what do we do in this case? Uh, the simple approach to this problem would be if you need expectation value of the Hamiltonian, then you can introduce a resolution of identity in terms of some unitary. And the purpose of that introduction is that uh, the unitary uh, will modify the Hamiltonian and the wave function so that expectation value is the same. But uh, the way it will modify the Hamiltonian is that it will make a linear combination of only Z operators out of it. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, uh, but isn't that pretty much equivalent to solving the eigenvalue problem uh, with this unitary transformation? And uh, indeed, that's the case. That's why finding such unitary is essentially equivalent to solving the original problem and uh, cannot be done for interesting problems. Now, this is actually the reason why one can do somewhat a different scheme where we partition Hamiltonian into smaller pieces where we can find the unitaries that diagonalize those smaller pieces, right? So following the same idea and using the linearity of the expectation value, right? Uh, we can partition the Hamiltonian into pieces where we can do this. Now, once we imagine did this, uh, then the wave function will need to be transformed with the unitary and we measure the piece that is now is full of set operators hn right and the requirements for success of this scheme is that of course hn operators that you obtain uh, they need to be like diagonal in a z or they contain only z operators you would like to have uh, the smallest number of uh, fragments as possible because for each fragment you need to do the sampling and you don't want to increase the number of uh, sets to measure. And then number three is that the unitary transformation needs to be uh, relatively simple otherwise your circuit will be uh, more complicated because of this measurement scheme. Okay now in our work we study uh, general Lie algebraic considerations for electronic Hamiltonian but in this video, just to keep it simple, I will show the most uh, efficient way of dealing with fermionic Hamiltonians. And uh, that is to incorporate it into uh, algebra of uh, single particle excitations. Uh, those excitations, they form the algebra, meaning that if you find the commutator of all possible operators from that set, you, they will be just a linear combination of operators from that set. Now, more than that, not all operators commute, but there is a set of operators that uh, form largest commuting subset. And uh, that subset is called Cartan-Sub algebra. Uh, as you can imagine, because we called our paper Cartan-Sub algebra decomposition, those operators play a leading role in our kind of uh, developments. Now, what is also interesting is that jordan Wigner mapping, at least, uh, can map uh, expectation value of uh, this 
operate, oh, sorry, not expectation value, but uh, these operators, uh, occupation operators, into that only operators. Therefore, any function of uh, these occupation operators from Cartan subalgebra can be used uh, as these uh, operators that we can measure. Okay. Now, what are the measurable fragments that uh, uh, we can use in our developments? They can be written in the following form. We call them mean field Hamiltonians because for these type of operators, actually mean field theories like Hartifog would provide the exact answer. And that's the etymology of the uh, name. At, uh, the structure of these operators is the following. We have uh, essentially orbital rotations, Hartifog rotations, or mean field unitary rotations that are obtained by exponentiating the algebra. And uh, those unitaries are on both sides sandwich the Cartan subalgebra functions, right? Because we have only occupation number operators here with some constants A, B, and then we can go for higher powers, but for the electronic Hamiltonian, we don't need to go beyond the second uh, power. Okay, and then in order to represent the Hamiltonian, as a linear combination of such uh, mean field solvable Hamiltonians, we do the optim nonlinear optimization where we're trying to find the lowest M, uh, which uh, provide us with the uh, mean field Hamiltonians that if you sum them all together, give you the original Hamiltonian. For that, we optimize the coefficients in, the, in this function and in the mean field rotations. Okay, now result of that, Present here. We looked at the small molecules where this n first column is the number of qubits. Uh, scaling of different methods is presented here. References for these methods are here. And uh, the next uh, column after number of qubits is the uh, total number of terms uh, in the qubit representation after Jordan Wigner transformation of electronic Hamiltonian. So in blue box, uh, there are qubit based techniques that were proposed before say the first one and the simplest one, qubit-wise commuting technique, doesn't change the scaling, but reduce about three times the number of uh, measurements you need to do. So essentially every three terms can be uh, combined into a group that this scheme provides a way to measure. Now, the next more advanced scheme is where you can uh, combine all commuting Pauli products into a group that you measure together and that reduces the scaling to the cubic scaling. Now, the next uh, are the techniques that use fermionic algebra. The previous record holder, this uh, technique suggested here uh, using the SVD decomposition. And as you can see, our technique uh, can improve on the previous one uh, at least three times uh, on average. And uh, the most, uh, kind of uh, impressive reduction is in the case of ammonia, where 3,600 terms can be measured by forming 12 groups. So that's 300 times reduction. And the scaling is close to 1.5. Uh, I guess for the larger molecules, it's probably gonna go to linear, but uh, for small molecules, it's just uh, relatively uh, close to 1.5. Okay, so with, uh, with that, uh, if you want to know more uh, details on the work, uh, please follow the reference. And uh, thank you all for your attention.